Hello, I'm Flip Nicklin. Welcome to Humpback Chronicles. Hawaii is a great place to look at and listen to humpback whales. There are lots of protected waters, the water's warm and clear, and there's an airport you can fly into and places you can live at. If you look at any of the migration maps, it's one of those dots that says this is a place where whales come to mate and to calve. And I remember being told from the time I started working with researchers in Hawaii that though it is one of the easy places to work and a convenient place to work, it doesn't mean it's the only or the most important place for whales. My guest today is Beth Goodwin from the Jupiter Research Foundation. She is the director and vice president of Hawaii Operations and a co-founder of Liquid Robotics. I think she's one of those people who's changing the way we see whales that we can't see. Hello, Beth, and welcome to Humpback Chronicles. How did you and Wave Gliders get involved with uh, Jim Darling and Whale Trust? Well, I've known Jim since I started working with whales in 1980, back in our Santa Cruz days. And I've been working with Wave Gliders since 2006. One year, a wave glider that had cruised from California to Alaska was having issues during its return leg, and it just so happened to be off Tofino, B.C., where Jim lives. I called him up, and I asked him if he could get a teammate and I out on the water to recover it. We flew up there to find it was completely tangled in kelp, yet was still merrily swimming along. Jim saw this, and his brain started churning. When I got out of the water, he asked, "'So this thing is cruising around all over the ocean.' Why don't you have a hydrophone strapped to it recording whale sounds? <laughs> I laughed and said, well, that's exactly what I plan to do. I just got to build the payloads. That's great, Beth. What is a wave glider? A wave glider is a two-part vehicle that is self-propelled by waves and charged with solar panels. It has a surface float that has a 26-foot tether to a sub with a set of fins that move up and down as the float moves up and down on the water surface, propelling it forward. We have attached a hydrophone 30 feet below the sub to stream live whale song to our Jupiter Research Foundation website. It kind of goes like this. had a more robust wave glider and had built a sophisticated audio payload and a custom design housing for the hydrophone, I called Jim back up and said, okay, I'm ready. Where should we send this thing? We discussed a few ideas and finally decided on an exploration mission between Hawaiian Mexico and Hawaiian the Mariana Trench. We wanted to see if humpback whales were present in these deep ocean basins between the breeding grounds as either offshore assemblies or if they actually migrated within the same season between the grounds. See, the song, which is virtually the same between Asia, Hawaii, and Mexico, and matching photo ID pictures of their flukes between these grounds, indicate that humpback whales switch up their winter destinations from time to time. We know they come to coastal tropical waters to mate and calf, but no one had ever actually searched for them between these breeding grounds. We set out to see if we could find whales by detecting their song, which was like searching for a needle in a haystack, but at least this needle was a very loud one. Well, did you find the needle? Actually, we did, much to our astonishment. Think about it. One solitary wave glider equipped with one hydrophone cruising along at one and a half knots in thousands and thousands of miles of open ocean just happened to cruise by a singing humpback? Our exploration is called Humpbacks, which stands for Humpback Pacific Survey, covered over 3,700 miles in 100 days. We heard humpbacks out to 1,200 miles halfway between Hawaii and Mexico, where nobody thought they would be. Since our mission was such a success, the following year, 2019, we went west. And how did that turn out? Humpbacks West was a bit more adventurous. 
The wave glider, which by the way we called Europa, ended up having a mechanical failure and had to be recovered. This required a teammate and I to fly out to Majuro in the Marshall Islands and charter a vessel to go 650 miles out into the middle of nowhere in the Pacific to recover Europa. That sounds like it was quite an adventure. Did you find any whales? Indeed we did. Again, over a thousand miles west of Hawaii, similar to what we heard in Humpback's East. That's great. So what happened next? The success of these two missions and the use of this technology is opening up more methods to survey the deep oceans or remote areas that are otherwise too costly or risky to do by ships. In fact, we were asked to survey the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands or Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument under a NOAA Navy contract just this past winter, 2020. While it's known humpbacks are in these waters, we were able to survey around atolls that due to their remoteness had previously not been surveyed. It's really pretty amazing how this opens up a way to see those whales we can't see. It changes how we see whales in our world, in the underwater world. Amazing stuff. And wh where would you like to go from here? What Jim and I have found with both humpbacks east and west really does need to be validated to make sure it wasn't just a fluke, so to speak. We need to better understand what's going on out there. We'd like to send the wave glider back to these areas and loiter around to see if this was just a one-time only occurrence, or if there are actual offshore assemblies out there, or if there's more migration between the tropical breeding grounds than anyone thought. So now we have to decide whether to go east or west. It's also a matter of getting a little funding. Probably we'll go east all the way to Mexico, as we've just learned something very interesting, and going east may help us to prove it. So stay tuned. There's more humpbacks to come. I hope you will stay tuned. Humpback season's just around the corner. Thank you very much, and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.